Hi, my name is Lawrence Peterson, and I have been working in a mechanical integrity field for more than 20 years, with five of those years implementing risk-based inspection, or RBI, programs. This presentation covers the steps needed for equipment field verification as part of an RBI implementation program. Topics covered in this presentation include determining which equipment to verify, field verifying equipment, reviewing the equipment data, and resolving any data discrepancies. When developing an RBI implementation program, one of the most important steps is determining what assets or equipment will be part of the scope. Part of determining that scope is the field verification process. Usually a list of equipment that needs to be verified is established during the kickoff meeting or the early part of a project when the scope is determined. The equipment list is generated by the owner user. They know their equipment and are more adept in determining what should be on the list. Although the owner users are familiar with their units, there are times when there are MOCs or changes in the field. For example, equipment removals or abandoned in place vessels might not be reflected on the list. Field verification is used to identify these vessels so that they can be removed from the list. It makes for a more accurate RBI program and it eliminates collecting data for equipment that will not be in scope. The first step in the physical aspect of the field verification is determining where in the unit the equipment is located. Some aids that can be used are plot plans, process flow diagrams, or just asking unit operations personnel if all else fails. Some of the information that can be recorded is the nameplate data, the observed coding quality, is it insulated, what type of insulation, and the condition of the insulation. Is it near a cooling tower or near an area where there is constant external wetting? The operating conditions seen on gauges, pressures, and temperatures. For storage tanks, what type of foundation does it have? Is it diked? What is the estimated area of the dike? And any other observations should be recorded if it may affect the damage mechanism review or the risk analysis. Is the equipment currently out of service or does it have extensive insulation damage? Can be examples of observations that should be recorded. The next step in the verification process is comparing the data recorded in the field to the data that is on file for the equipment. Serial numbers and national board numbers, if applicable, should match the information on the construction data files. The design pressures and temperatures on the nameplate should be compared to the manufacturer's data report. The operating temperatures and pressures on the gauges in the field should be compared to the heat and material balance if applicable. If there are any data discrepancies, further research might be required to determine the correct data. For example, if the design pressure on the nameplate does not match the manufacturer's data report, the vessel design calculation can be used to determine the correct data, or contacting the vessel manufacturer might be another option. If there is a discrepancy between serial numbers in the field and the equipment files, it could be that the equipment was replaced. In any case, after the correct data is determined, the correct value should be communicated to the data source owner so that the file can be updated. For additional information, please contact us through this website or email. Thank you for watching.